folks on YouTube, um, another review, and you might be asking, what is this? I read the description of the video, and this is not what I wanted. Actually, it is. It's just kind of my version. This, as you see, was my first hobby grade RC uh, a couple years back, and it, I painted it with paint that really wasn't meant for RC cars. I ran it with a clear body. I didn't take the um, protective layer off. It's just just for driving. Kind of a basher vehicle. So, got the F-150 body. Didn't do much something anything special to that. What really is awesome is the, the, the chassis itself. Um, it's a TAO2T remake. And it's basic. It's your standard early to late 90s um, bashing chassis. Some To me, I advertised it as a racing chassis, but definitely not. Not in any respect. At all. Every once in a while, I, I put a slight modification onto this, and I uh, the, the back suspension kept collapsing, so I put these, uh, actually, since the buggy springs are slightly longer versus the... Uh, the Tamiya Springs, I put these Team Associated Tuned Buggy Springs. I was going to put them on my TTO2 B chassis, but decided not to. And uh, they didn't really fit too well in the GPM shocks anyway. Um, that's one of the, and I have uh, Team Associated 500 weight oil in there also. Because the pistons are just, oil passes through them really, really easily. The tires have the same diameter, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the wheels have the same diameter, and the tires are, are, are the, the stock tires are about that big around, but I, I mounted these ones from a CC01 Land Freighter chassis, I actually swapped the tires out, and I did that because the diameter of the stock tires in this is about this big, and it just makes the center of gravity so high that when you drive over a rough terrain and, and just swing a hard left or right, it flips over about 20 times and you end up breaking body posts and stuff and I'll go over that in a couple of seconds and so I just swapped out the tires it gave the other one a little bit more ride height and this one a little bit lower center of gravity and that really helps but the traction on it sucks so bad it just slides all over the place and this is the 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 it can only fit this size of wheel on it nothing else otherwise it goes beyond what it can mount so that uh, downside of this chassis. Another thing to take in consideration is, of course, that. That has no adjustability. There is no adjustability on this chassis whatsoever. There is no adjustability on anything that includes, um, there's only th basically three um, motor mounting positions. There's one shock mount position on e each side. There is no tow angle corrections, there's nothing in the steering linkage except for one, one, one thing, and that's this, whatchamacallit, in the steering linkage. Basically all. I've kept the stock springs on the front with the team associated 500 weight oil also. And seems to do the job pretty quick. For electronics, I've done a Standard Futaba Servo, Tower Hobbies, or Saima, it's kind of a hole-in-the-wall brand that manufactures toy-grade RCs, and has fair, fairly okay six-cell packs. Um, stuck one of those in there. Uh, I kind of would like to run LiPo, but the, the battery, I really don't want to grind out the battery case. I have the standard Futaba 27 megahertz in there, just the two-channel uh, and then Hobby Wing 35 amp, and then this may seem like a small package is the tack on uh, 13 turn 3000 kV brushless motor, but the gears are so so cheap in this that one burst of throttle on that strips the gears. I've gone through about 10 to 13 gear sets in this easily. So yeah, and now to get to the handling part of this, this thing handles like nothing else. I took it to a the RC track in uh, forgot where um, uh, NorCal Hobbies is the the place, and I, I I turned a couple laps instantly. The the drive shafts right there popped out, 
and that usually never happens. That's because these two screws here and here popped out. And then that left the whole rear differential swaying all over the place, putting it two-wheel drive. Then the gear stripped after I put after I found the drive shaft on the track, and then it just had a bunch of problems. So this is more of just a basher vehicle. I would recommend not putting a brushless motor in it. I would recommend using either a sport tuned or a GT tuned from Tamiya if you like that kind of power. Maybe an arm of 15 turn, but nothing special. Uh, the Trinity motors are pretty good too. Um, I'm using also running the stock Molex connectors. And some people call them Tamiya connectors, but that's incorrect. It's called Molex. Um, and it just does, can't handle. It's it's a basher vehicle. It's great for uh, a beginning R RCS, but nothing that you would want to race around or anything. Um, it it does perform well in jumping, and it jumps square. Uh, actually, uh, you can barely hold down the throttle, and you'll you, you'll pull a perfect jump, especially jumping off objects directly. And so that's my full review of the Tamiya TAO two T. F-150. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Super RC.